Welcome to Rail Fans Canada. I'm Shane Sege. Joining me today is Aaron O'Neill, who's an artist in Ottawa who's created beautiful O-Train and Stage 2 construction art pieces. Thank you for joining me today. Thank you for having me. So can we start by talking about your background and your studies? What brought you to Ottawa and what's your background? Sure, so I'm originally from Ottawa actually and uh, I studied in Halifax for my undergrad and uh, the University of Waterloo for grad school and that's actually where I got interested in train um, imagery for my practice. I, I'm an ad, avid runner and when I would run through new cities I kept getting rerouted by construction so I found that that was actually an interesting way to approach a new series that became my graduate study um, for that degree and when I moved back to Ottawa the uh, train system was already up and functioning for stage one so that became uh, an interest so I was using the actual finished stations um, as the first iteration of this series which is now ongoing to include the construction sites. So can you tell us a little bit about the art show that you have here on display at 347 Preston Street? Sure, so this actually came uh, from the Ottawa School of Art in affiliation with my, uh, my gallery wall space. We decided to do a public space uh, show because the nature of this uh, work needs to be seen, I think, in a, in a very public setting. Um, this space at Preston Square is actually perfect. It houses a lot of different infrastructure architects, engineers within the building who see it on a daily basis. So I'm very pleased with, uh, with this use of, of a gallery uh, in the city. And um, yeah, it worked out really well uh, to have this work shown here. And if people want to come and see these art pieces, what's What's the uh, time frame for them to be able to see them here? Um, it seems like the, this part of the building, the atrium, is open uh, weekly, it seems. You can come in off the main entrance and the, the show is just available to the public at any time yeah, throughout the day. So can you tell us about the process that you go through when you create one of these art pieces about the O-Train? How do you start and what kind of resources do you use to base yourself on the picture that ultimately gets created? Sure, so I actually take uh, photos from either running or in some cases driving depending on how far I have to go or just walking through the neighborhood. So the image behind us actually is, is in the area I live so it's very easy to access. Um, I take, take photographs, sometimes I, I will collage them together or combine them to get the image I want and from that I work in my studio space to create, uh, to create the paintings and they are oil and acrylic on canvas. And how long does one of these prints take to make? That, that varies. It's always a funny question because, as you can see, they're quite expressive and loose. So it can take um, a few days for smaller pieces or up to a couple of weeks. And I'll have many going at once. So the nature of it is I'll usually have three, two or three going and I'll move between the pieces. If one is kind of at a standstill, I'll just switch to another painting. So this series did happen all at one time, but over the course of, of a few years. If we talk about the O-Train, what fascinates and interests you the most about the system? Um, actually, it's the impact on Ottawa. So it's the transformation of the landscape. It's the number one, uh, how it affects everyone in terms of how to walk through the city, bike, run, drive, any, any method, and including transportation itself. So I'm very interested in how that's actually created an entirely new feel for the city and it's continuing to completely carve its way through. So what made you start creating art pieces on the O-Train? So it started um, just with being back in Ottawa and having kind of completed that first series. I showed it at Wallspace and it was based on the architectural elements of the new stations and it was quite interestingly received because it was just something that people hadn't really seen done as painting and that kind of pushed me into thinking well what can painting do? It can document history in a way or it can document active things that are happening currently. So what I decided to do is that this is a sort of documentation of active history because these, state, these sites, construction moves so quickly, I decided that I could do something with this work to create these kinds of moments in time that will be gone. So some of the images show the tunnels exposed or the excavation and the scaffolding and that even within weeks will be gone. So I've decided to try and take it on to sort of document Ottawa's transit history. Of the art pieces you've created for the O-Train, which ones have been your favorites and which ones have presented additional challenge to create due to their complexity? 
Lots of interesting questions. Some of them I find because I revisit Byron, Byron Linear Park the most and around Cleary because that's sort of the neighborhood in which I live, I'm seeing the most amount of change there. So I'm, I'm most engaged with that shift. However, going out to areas like Leitrim and the more kind of outskirt areas, to me, I find just the, the isolation in some ways and watching the kind of infrastructure sort of magnetized towards the train. I'm actually curious to keep going back out, but it's not as much of, of daily or weekly, so it's more monthly. So the change is bigger and it's a bit harder for me to feel as connected to that. However, I am doing my best to see every site and to give it all kind of a certain amount of privilege of, of seeing what's happening where, but it is easier for me to access on foot uh, or bike the areas around me, but I'm still finding it, it's challenging to often get get the right angle on things or even get an interesting angle because at ground level you can't even see down as far because of the barriers. So I'm, I'm always kind of curious how I can get a different perspective on things. So that, that's been a challenge but a fun one. What is the inspiration of your artworks? It all comes from um, sites I can visit and in terms of mostly infrastructure and architecture. That's my main passion within my work. So showing the areas deemed less uh, beautiful to people but more on the functional side. I actually find that kind of still chaos something that is compelling to paint. So areas that are under construction or seemingly just not as, as pastoral and, and calming but also kind of evoke a certain emotion or reaction that we were reminded of this kind of chaotic moment but when we're living it we're not seeing that kind of impact. So I'm, I'm trying to capture things that maybe people don't see through the art lens as often. Which elements on the O-Train, be it the trains, the infrastructure, the stations, or the station design and layout, interests you the most and why? So I think the layout of the stations is actually something I quite enjoy as well. Um, they're subtle in a certain way, but also clearly something new. Um, in some cases where they contrast the original OC Transpo stations, I kind of love that old and new sort of divide that really, especially like Lincoln Fields, you're watching one kind of take over the other in a way, and I've been trying to capture that. And it sort of brings that relic into the new landscape. So I find the stations are actually quite a, a nice feature to the city as well. I actually really like the train itself too. Um, I look forward to the one going up to, I'm a Carleton student, so to be able to take the train back up to Carleton, I've been watching them building that link, so that would be quite handy as well. But yeah, I, I, I quite like what it's doing on the, on the skyline of the city. Which stations do you find the most visually and architecturally interesting? Um, so in terms of landscape, I'm really excited to see how Le Breton Flat starts to absorb that um, around it to, to bring the station because right now it's quite, it's quite easy to spot, it kind of sits right there at Booth Street, sort of, you know, it's what you're watching the city grow around it. There's a lot of talk of what's going to happen there. Um, and it's one of the ones where you see both sides very clearly with the bridge carving between. So I kind of love that visual aspect where you can go down on either side of it. Um, and it, it, it's the most kind of stands out quite a lot. Um, the one I did of the painting of Moody Station, I caught just the framework of it. So you really get the sense of these kind of winged atmosphere of the station. So that's kind of an interesting component for sure. So for those that are interested in acquiring one of your artworks, how can they go about doing so? Um, so I'm represented at Wall Space Gallery, which is in uh, the West End uh, on Richmond Road. So they have been representing the work and the Ottawa School of Art was uh, kind enough to offer this space. But the work is available through, uh, through Wall Space Gallery. And do you do custom requests of stations or infrastructure? I have. I have had the privilege of doing a lot of commissions through different construction uh, companies in Ottawa. Uh, not necessarily all train related, but I have done a few that are, are affiliated with this construction for sure. Well, Aaron O'Neill, thank you again for speaking to us about these beautiful artworks, talking about the O-Train, sharing your passion. Thank you very much. Thank you so much.